Hey everyone, Shark here. So this is a little bit of a lengthy video, really only focusing on the multiplayer balance changes. With me, I got Aries, who's going to help me walk through uh, all the updates. That said, there's not a whole lot going on in the video here. You'll see me scrolling through the various balance stuff. So if you want to follow along, you can. Otherwise, I honestly recommend that you just like put in headphones, walk around the house, do some chores, and listen to the balance update as it comes. All right, with that, we'll get rolling. So here with Aries, and what we're going to do, we're going to ignore the rest of the patch notes. We're only going to talk about the multiplayer balance stuff. Um, and time to kill, right? They had this big, long description of what their goal was. Uh, essentially, they just want to reduce infantry time to kill, especially for early game units. What we're going to do is talk about that in route as you see some of the stat changes. Um, and so from there, we'll, we'll ignore it for now, and we'll get to it kind of later on. Uh, first thing, construction penalty. Uh, Infantry units constructing structures, buildings, or field defenses now take 50% more damage. I'll be honest, Aries, I thought this was a thing. I was kind of surprised that they added this. Yeah, I thought it was a thing, too. Um, I know they did take more damage. Maybe they just buffed it, say, from 25% to 50 I don't know why they wouldn't specify that, but uh, a little weird. Yeah. Well, hopefully this affects coastals, because those guys build stuff super fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tank riding. Um Cool, they basically streamlined it. I think they want people to use it more. Um, I mainly see it for units coming onto the field. Have you ever seen it used for any any other purpose? Um, every now and then, I personally use it on like larger team game modes, especially if I got a couple vehicles in at base, I can just throw the infantry on there with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really go out of my way to use it all that much. Yeah, uh, same. So, hey, if you're into tank riding or you're playing like 4v4 on a big map, um, use your vehicles to get your, your guys across the map quickly. Um, looks like it'll be a little bit more streamlined. Speed bonuses. Uh, this is something we saw a lot. So flanking maneuver and sprint no longer stacks as well as some other auras and the cover to cover ability. So no more Usain Bolt riflemen chasing down snipers. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I could go either way on this. I thought the use of the flanking maneuver was a good kind of skill, skill play, but I understand why they're doing this. It's, a uh... Yeah, yeah. There, was, I've I've had a couple of moments where rangers practically teleport on top of you through this. So. Yeah, it's just just that it, you know, American strength and conditioning training, obviously, especially Clearly. for rangers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, the demo charges. I'm gonna let you go to this one. Um, they they kind of covered it in the deep dive, but uh, it looks like they're basically detected by sight or by minesweepers. Um, I don't, the, the actual like damage values, um, I don't necessarily like, it's not super intuitive to me. Do you have any, any thoughts on this? Um, I, I like the change personally. I, I like that it can be spotted if you're using the correct tools. I also like that it is harder to spot if you're not using the correct tools. Um, I think we've every, we've tried to use them now and then, and you have units walk up to it and you can see it from a mile away. So mm -hmm. it's a waste of your munitions. Now you can finally get those wipes that you're trying to get. I, I do know from a competitive standpoint that they have banned it in tournaments before. Uh, I could really see a ban coming now because from what they were to what they should be now is going to be a huge difference. Yeah. I, I this last line here SSF commando demo charges are only revealed by minesweepers but cost 75 munis instead of 50. I like this before I this like that too. I, I thought no reason to to choose anything but the knife throw. Mm -hmm. Um now with the knife throw, you know it only does 100 damage, it's affected by cover. So knife throw is not that great. And so now with this dem invisible demo, like I, I think you'll see this used. And you're you're probably right. It'll probably be banned in tournaments cuz invisible demo is gross. <laughs> Um, but man, some epic moments for uh, for the shorts videos for sure. Oh, it's gonna be fun. <clears throat> okay, this is interesting. So, uh, resource caches basically provide a forward retreat point, can be upgraded to act as a forward retreat point, costs 150 manpower, 45 second research time. Um, so now everybody gets access to retreat points via caches. Your thoughts? So, I'm curious if they're going to actually make it on resource caches or if they're just calling it a resource cache and it has to be built on like little manpower cutoff point sectors that you kept mm. um i think it's a good change if you watched their balance patch video they kind of mentioned like you know take a captain for example you know where they're at you go to artillery all they have to do is pack up and move yeah. and 
you're never going to touch it. So especially in like larger team games for you 3v3 and 4v4 people, um, I think it's going to be great for this. It you know There's going to be more strategy put into it too. It's basically going to be your fob. So if you're not protecting it, you get overran, you're losing out. But if you can protect it, you can really excel off of it. So I think it's a, a catch-22, but I think it's for the better. Yeah, I like it in general because it allows you to play with an infantry heavy build without forcing you to lock into either a battle group or the ISC, right? Um, if you can put it anywhere, uh, as long as you build a cache on it, then it gives you some additional viability and probably encourages playing with, with other support centers or other battle groups. Um, yeah. Toad howitzers, howitzer emplacements basically improved accuracy. Um, this is just going to make them ev- even more devastating at range. Uh, my biggest frustration with these, especially in like ones, is you know a howitzer. I actually had someone do this to me once. Put a howitzer right on the edge of their base where I couldn't attack it, and just bombarded my base and knocked out my buildings. Uh, <laughs> and he won a game like that. So um, this is a strategy, and I'm sorry that I just put this out on the internet. Uh, I apologize to everyone who gets their base knocked out. My bad. <laughs> Somebody mentioned the obese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, angers angle scatter reduced from ten to nine. Yeah, it just basically means more accurate. Um, yeah, I think it's a good change. The uh, the OBJ over over range was very very inaccurate. Granted, if it hit, it destroyed anything it touched, but yeah. um, it only shoot in three shots. So I think it's a good change for this. It's it you know it's going to bring it artillery back into the play style a little bit more. Which this last patch, personally, I've seen fall off. It, it hasn't been as prevalent. Yeah, you got to strike a balance, right? Because if you make artillery too powerful, then every like 3v3 and 4v4 just turns into a gigantic artillery fest. Twos um, and ones as well. It, I think it equally affects almost every single game mode. Yeah, like the old in- advanced emplacements commander from Co2 where just everything oh, turned yeah. into cancer. Yeah. Um, medium mortar teams and mortar half tracks. Uh, mortars are too potent. So I, I really like this. So it basically increases the scatter. It makes the mortars less accurate when they're auto firing. Um, but the barrages maintain their accuracy. I think this is a great change because it rewards players that micro the mortar well. Uh, and is like a just so you can't just keep a mortar in the back and leave it there and expect it to do your work for you. Um, and I, I think it's even more relevant. And I have a, I did play a game where I pretty much ran up and stole a mortar because with the increased infantry lethality, if you leave your mortar unprotected, it can get decrewed and stolen relatively quickly. I think this was a kind of funny one. I was watching the deep dive video on it. Um, the thing that came to my head is, oh, you want players to actually pay, play the RTS the way it's meant to be played. <laughs> yeah. So I like this change. I think it's good. It rewards, you know, it rewards attention. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we get this way at the skill planes eventually. Um, <laughs> HMG teams, uh, veterancy requirements lowered. And the veterancy changed to basically increase uh, health reload speed, uh, damage reduction for vet three, increase suppression, increase burst length, increase weapon accuracy. I can tell you the infantry lethality is an MG nerf for sure. Um, Because you know if your infantry are in green cover, MG shoots at them. Unless it's in a building, it doesn't suppress them. And now with the damage coming in much higher, you'll see uh, MG team models drop almost immediately. and so yeah. I think this is necessary to help the MG scale. Uh, I am a bit worried uh, specifically towards the Vickers. Um, the Vickers already had the highest lethality in game. They had the highest accuracy. I mean, compared to any other thing, it would just it could wipe units by itself. Yeah. Um, so I personally would have liked to see a bit of a tone down on the Vickers while it still gets some buffs, say maybe half of them, half it. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it needed the full, say, 20%, 25% that this is getting. I mean, it was just, I just have one game where I played against it, but the Vickers was basically worthless against Dak, P. Grenz, and Cover. Like, just oh, okay. immediately dropped, like, two models, and they had to retreat it every time. Um, now, against against I'm, someone who had good micro, maybe maybe that's not the case, but that was my kind of initial thought. Okay. Uh, other team-based weapons, again... As a general rule, it looks like veterancy is basically going to provide them with health and then damage reduction. Uh, this is necessary, like it, for sure. Um, and you got to be much better about protecting stuff like your AT guns, your mortars, than in the past uh, because they are going to get whittled down quickly. And it's also worth noting, like the veterancy stuff, when it gets decrewed, you lose all that veterancy. So, yeah. Um, yeah, infantry are a much better counter to team weapons than they've been in the past, which 
I think makes sense, right? You get into that like rock, paper, scissors gameplay. So uh, I'm a fan of that, that change. Uh, Centaur, Bulldozer, Brum Bear, Stug D, deflection damage reduced from 50% to 25%. So, Aries, I'm just, uh, I know I'm mansplaining to you, but uh, for, <laughs> for everyone out there who doesn't understand how the penetration mechanic works. So, every uh, weapon has a penetration value, and then uh, if it's a hit, it's compared to the armor value of the receiving vehicle, and penetration divided by armor yields your chance of, pe of penetrating. So if it's one or greater, it's always going to penetrate. If it's less than one, it's basically a, a, a die roll to see uh, if you're going to penetrate or not. Um, for these more artillery style vehicle weapons, the Centaur, the Bulldozer, the Brum Bear, the Stug, if it doesn't penetrate, it still deals some damage. And that damage is basically deflection damage. And so it's AOE based. Um, but so the Stug D, I was testing this last night for some reason, so just bear with me. Normally does 120 damage. When it bounces, it would default to 60 unless the unless it hits slightly off the vehicle, and then it's like an AoE damage, so it might be 18 or 20 yeah. or 30, whatever. So what they're basically saying is you shouldn't be able to use a bulldozer or a brum bear stug D to knock out vehicles. So the deflection damage is pared down. And I think this is good. Um specifically like I feel like USF fills the, the pain the most fighting against the Brumbar. This last patch, Brumbar spam has become very prevalent. Um, yeah. It is one of the metas. So, you know, you get players making two, three Brumbars with AT guns sent behind them, and that's all the tank they need because mm -hmm. those Brumbars can take out mainline tanks that are designed to kill these tanks, and they just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I think it's a good change. The, the pack wall with them is still going to be effective, but the Brumbars themselves won't be able to do a whole lot. So, yeah. Uh, made some changes to field defenses, sandbag armor lowered so you can hurt them with all small arms fire, and barbed wire, you now cannot hurt with small arms fire. Uh, Aries, I'm going to push this over to you. I don't use barbed wire all that much, so what do you think? Um, I think this is great. I, it was a future in KOTU that, you know, you could target the wire and the sandbags and stuff, and <clears throat> I'm glad to see that come in here. Uh, it can be you know, say say you want to take a point and you got a grand squad that got there before your rifleman did, you can now wipe out the sandbags, take away their cover. Granted, with TTK, it's going to be a little interesting how that's going to work, but I think it's yeah. a good change overall. I, I definitely do like it. Yeah. Um, I think it'll reward players that have the presence of mind to put up field defenses, for sure. Yeah. Uh, handbrake for med, for med trucks, basically. Um so you don't accidentally move it by like clicking and dragging and just lock it in place. Uh, I, I think it's a decent quality of life thing. I'm glad they brought that back. Yeah. All right. On to the Americans. This is where we're going to start to see the, uh, the TTK stuff. <clears throat> so scouts, uh, health goes from 80 to 85, uh, significant accuracy increase across the board. Um, Pathfinder accuracy also increased uh significantly so it looks like the artillery observers won't get the accuracy bonus but the pathfinders and the standard scouts will um and then they change the veterancy to increase the health um i haven't used the the scouts it seems like they die pretty quick uh to infantry fire at this point um i think it's probably just to balance them to to bring them up on par of everybody else i would expect them to still be the pathetic <laughs> unit that they once were <laughs> um yeah relic doesn't really unfortunately love them all that much so yeah i while it's a it's a nice increase i don't really think it's going to make that much of a difference with the adjustments that everything else has gotten yeah keep them keep out of combat guys use the flare smoke uh engineer yeah. uh accuracy increase the assault engineer gets an additional near accuracy increase um and then the grease gun that they use is the same uh, and so we'll have the same accuracy values except for the close. So the assault engineer is basically you get the fifth model and you get uh, additional up close accuracy, but otherwise uh, it's the same. Um, I think engineers are in a decent spot. They feel like if you, I feel like if you close the distance with them, they do some damage, but um, out in the open at range, they drop models like they're supposed to. Um, yeah, I think this is probably online. Um, bazooka team. So this one's interesting. Uh, and this is something I felt. So they talk about how the bazooka, uh, would get outranged by the vehicles it's supposed to counter. Um, 
And so what they did is they gave it a passive ability. So when it's stationary uh, for three and a half seconds, it gains seven and a half, seven and a half range until it moves. So essentially you can set up your Zooks uh, in like in cover in a building um, and they'll now be able to outrange most vehicles. I think the, the actual range will now be 42 and a half. Um, and it, their manpower increased to 280, so you still can't like really uh, spam these. You won't be able to spam these guys. And also they're going to bleed manpower like crazy if there are any infantry around. Uh, but I, I like this. What do you think, man? I think it's good. I think it's a good change. Um, the The biggest issue with them was just not being able to keep up with mid-game vehicles, so I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, paratroopers, carbine accuracy. So it's interesting they talk about the TTK buff to early game infantry, but they're including uh, like paras, and then you'll see late, later like Jaegers and Pegrens as well. So um, every, Real every, quick, yeah. I just Sorry. I want to say they're probably doing that. Um, you realistically can see a paratrooper squad within three to five minutes. Uh, depending yeah. on how you know how much action you get yourself into, it's only one CP. So I personally would consider while they're you know they're supposed to scale, they are an elite unit. Um, I personally do see them as a early game unit. Now, with the SSF commandos, I don't understand that. Yeah, um, I think they just need to give them uh, a buff because they they already didn't scale well, and now with everything else do an additional damage it, it makes sense to me yeah uh but I, so i think you're going to see everything except the elite infantry stoss troop and rangers gurkhas commandos uh is going to see uh like they said about a 25 percent improvement in performance and for the most part it's in accuracy right so it just means more consistent damage done over time which uh in theory should reduce the rng of some of the engagements but in some of the testing that i've done there's still pretty heavy rng um, and then once use, units close the distance, it's, you know, anybody's guess who's going to win uh, if they're shooting carbines or bolt actions. Um, the other thing that I've seen is um, for some of the some of the squads, the cooldown also reduced, right? So for the paratroopers, yeah. it makes sense they're shooting a, a semi-auto carbine. Um, although, actually, no, that cooldown applies to their uh, the LMG. LMG. Yeah, so sorry, my bad, misread that one. For the rifles, the Garand cooldown gets decreased. Accuracy increased again by about 25%. The Thompson accuracy also gets increased. Um, but that Thompson basically shoots rubber bullets. So um, <laughs> I don't think you're going to see much benefit from that. Uh, SSF Commandos now use the same stats as the uh, their Garand uses the same stats as the Rifleman, but they have a, a shorter, a significantly shorter cooldown, half second shorter cooldown across the board. Uh, and improved long range accuracy. So that's so the SSF Commando should be a little bit more viable, especially at range, between the the improved Garand accuracy and fire rate, and then also they got the two LMGs. So uh, yeah, at three CPs they should be better. But oh yeah, yeah. Captain Retinue, like we talked about earlier, can no longer act as a forward retreat point. Uh, it's the Thompson accuracy on the captain has increased. But I think that's almost a moot point. Honestly, the captain, you got to be keep this thing in the rear. Now it's going to get annihilated by the. Increase. You really do. Um, you got to follow it. You know, if you're going to use it on the front lines, it's got to be building to building kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So and and no forward retreat, which I honestly think is good because it'll force players to use the captain. I think as intended with stuff like uh, the mortar barrage, mark target, flanking maneuver, uh, etc. I think the flanking maneuver is underused by like low and mid-level players and it's really really powerful um especially with the increased ttk so you can use get like rangers to close the distance uh with enemy squads much faster now i think you're gonna love this one aries the jeep from 240 to 200 manpower now i think it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i like it i i think we're gonna see some jeep spam boys i I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I've only played two games, <laughs> so <laughs> much cheaper. But then also, like, if you lose one to a mine, it doesn't break the game for you. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not opposed to it. Uh, the Scott. So uh, their their narrative here says it's basically it's a stumble. It's supposed to be a stumble, 
but it's available later battle group locked um and it, the summer was outperforming it so they increased its health significantly increased its area of effect um i i think you're going to see more of the scott i'm i'm glad um it has been underperforming most of the time you know you just skip it you get something else there's not really a point to make this tank unless you just kind of want to meme around um it has a lot of viability and utility it just doesn't do that well and in comparison you know it's a lot cheaper to make a stumble mm -hmm. and if it dies it's not like oh my gosh i lost it it's just like okay well that sucked versus your scott you're putting an investment into it it is quite a bit more expensive yeah so uh 420 health it's still three AT gunshots will knock it out, right? So no real change there, um, but it's just going to give it a little bit more resilience to I think like anti anti like infantry held anti tank. Um, that and snares as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah I think you'll you'll see it used uh, a little bit more. I like it, and I think it's a good counter to some of the Axis infantry that is also going to get buffed, and the allies are going to need help with. Uh, yeah, so it makes sense. This uh this Sherman ability, I love this. Right? Instead of the HE, uh all machine guns on the Sherman now can su can suppress when you use this ability. Increases burst length by 50%. Uh does not cost munitions but reduces the speed of the vehicle by 33%. This just makes me think of that scene in Fury where the three Shermans are advancing <laughs> on the Tiger and the MGs are blazing. It's yeah. like, why? Why are you even shooting the machine guns? But I think it's going to look super cool to see Shermans coming across the map doing this. Well, now we can suppress tigers in game as well. Yeah. Um, you will need, of course, about three of them, though, to do so. <laughs> and then an easy eight <laughs> to shoot it right in the engine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to, to ricochet. <laughs> All right. Uh, Weasel now can detect camouflage units up to range 25. I, I like it. I do too. I think it's a good change. Canister shot. This is a big one. Canister shot now is a, a toggle ability. It's, a, it's free for the Sherman and the Greyhound. Uh, I can't tell if this is... I think this was tied to the Mechanized Support Center previously. I it, When they say it's free, I assume that means it's still tied to the MSE, like, uh, refit rounds uh, ability. But um, I, will, I will check that. So it basically reduces the range, but significantly increases the anti-infantry effect of the weapon. Um, from experience, I can tell you this is absolutely savage at dealing with infantry units on retreat. Like, you're going to straight up murder some retreating squads with Greyhounds if you use this. Um, you see a Greyhound run. <laughs> yeah, basically, like, yeah, you are not ready. Um, and we'll talk about that at the end, like, the, kind of the impacts of all these changes. Um, HVAP and armor piercing rounds, no longer an automatic penetration. Now they just give plus 50% penetration. Um, yeah, uh, over to you. I think it's a good change. Uh, personally, I do. It was kind of, um, you know, take the easy eight, for example, you could get two or three of them together and, you know, granted cost for cost, they were much more expensive for a tiger. Uh, but, you know, how the game works, you're not necessarily always floating a thousand manpower. You shouldn't be. So a 700 manpower investment versus, say, an easy eight investment, 330 ish manpower if you uh, go armor and, you know, you get the discount versus 700 is huge and when you have a tank that can just automatically penetrate no matter what um i think it just kind of lowers the overall strategy of the game and it's not punishing to be like okay i'm going to push this and you you know you but you're not chancing am i going to win you know you're going to win and now you're you're giving that chance so it's a risk to reward and i think it's a good move yeah so i i think back to like some of the fights between a hellcat and a tiger if you trigger the hvap on the hellcat then it penetrates the tiger from the front and it outranges the tiger, and so like now they're basically on par, like slugging it out, which you would never actually do with a Hellcat. Um, so now the Hellcat exactly. basically has that choice, like, yeah, you can plink at range, maybe you'll get a hit, maybe you won't. Or you can dive the tiger, but you need numbers, and you need infantry support for that, and if the tiger is totally unsupported like that, it probably deserves to die. So, uh, I think this makes sense. And my dog really agrees. <laughs> um, uh, air support center strafing run delay reduced from two to one. Um, I I honestly I love this. I think the air support center needs a little bit of love. 
Um, I've said before, I think the strafing run, it just needs to suppress, doesn't need to do a ton of damage. Yeah. But with too much of a delay, it's basically pointless, and you're not giving people any incentive to choose it. No, it's too easy to move out of the way. Yeah. Muni surplus, uh, basically flip-flops. So now it has nothing to do with the cost of weapon upgrades. Now it reduces the cost of infantry abilities, demo charges, and mines by 10 munitions across the board. Makes I think sense. this is good. Yeah. I think that's how it should have been in the first place. Um, you know, it never affected the actual utility of the squad, just the weapons. So it, while it was cheap and it saves, you know, your instant munitions, it didn't scale that well once you got everything bought. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good change. Yeah. Uh, they upped it to, from 15 fuel to 25 fuel, but now it doesn't feel like a waste to pick it late in the game, right? Exactly. Um, whereas before, if you wanted it, if you were going to play he with heavy BARs or uh, Zooks or LMGs, you need to get this out. You need to choose it immediately, otherwise it's pointless. Yeah. Uh, War Machine CP requirement from 2 to 3. Uh, I like this. The light vehicles are going to be hard enough to deal with anyway. That, that makes them so cheap. Hiding behind one more CP... I think either forces the timing later or forces you it impacts like later game units not mid game this is a little disappointing to me <laughs> um as we'll see further into the patch notes not because of the discount that you're getting at mid game mm -hmm. but because access still have the ability to spam very cheap units mm -hmm. and you almost need war machine in the current meta which i don't think is changing according to these patch notes mm -hmm. uh to counter say eight red spam um you basically had a you needed war machine to counter it because you had always a wall of packs in behind you and you can't push up with infantry and you can't use AT because you'll just get swarmed. So I don't necessarily agree with this move without a nerf specifically to the Wormock eight red spam that's happening right now. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um and like to that point, right? The DAC, the requirement for the DAC to build AT guns requires you to side tech them in a different fashion than to build DAC 8 rads. So you basically get one or the other, right? So you very rarely see DAC spam 8 rods with a pack wall behind AT them. AT guns, yeah. yeah. Um, instead, you see Panzer Jaegers, which are cool, but niche, kind of soft counters to armor, uh, and the Martyrs, which are also decent, but only when they gain some veterancy, some upgrades, and there's two of them. Uh, exactly. And they cost so much fuel that you can't spam them easily. So, yeah, I think you're right. This... The Wehrmacht uh, mechanized build into 8 rads is going to benefit from this. It was almost an indirect buff <clears throat> for that faction, for that playstyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so be prepared for 8-rod uh, spam if you're 1v1-ing a Wehrmacht player. Um, Sherman Combat Group Command Point Requirement increased from 7 to 8. I don't have an issue with this. I think I actually like the uh, either choose... To unlock the combat group via command points or just build a tank depot and, and build it through production. Um, so no issue from me here. Alright. Uh, on to Wehrmacht. Accuracy bonus. Grenadiers are super strong. Um, even before <laughs> the patch, when I was doing testing, Grenadiers versus rifles was basically a wash uh, with RNG. Um, they got it. What range though? That's what really ties it together. Well, so so that's what's wild is in theory the rifle should win up close and the grenadier should win at range. Correct. Except that it doesn't work out that way because the Gren rifles do like four more damage per shot than the Grands, and so near with the near accuracy buff that he got in the last patch and then this one, uh, Grens and rifles at point blank is basically uh, a coin flip slightly in favor of the grenadiers. And then when you when you throw in the breakthrough MP40s is not even close. Uh, the rifles just get shredded. Now it gets flipped on its head when the rifles have BARs, as you'd yeah. expect though. But that's like a late game pack. So I, I think Grenadiers are going to be really strong this patch, um, and and I honestly think they probably need to be toned down again. Uh, them and the the coastals, which we'll we'll get to. Uh, Pios. Uh, yeah, so similar benefits to the engineers and the scouts from before. Minor health increase, minor accuracy increase. Um, yeah, I like, man, Pios just die so fast and everything's stronger. This is, you're going to have to keep your pioneers out of combat, I think. Jaegers, this scares the crap out of me. You see these <laughs> accuracy numbers? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, a, 
It's a big buff. Uh, Yeager AT spam is going to be that much more dangerous. And they buff the damage of the scope rifles and reduce the cooldown like less than a second. I, okay. I think that's okay because we never really, you know, you don't see it as much. To me, if I'm going to make a Yeager squad, unless I just want to be dumb and I have a bunch of them, I'm always going to throw the AT, you know, the Shreks on them. That's yeah. going to be my, you know, my anti tank. Um, so I think this is a bit more of a way for them to try to influence of, hey, you know, there's another attack option that you can use that majorly gets overlooked because Jaegers are so good that you can have the Shrek and they can still counter infantry just fine. Oh, yeah, that's, so, my, that's my biggest issue with them. I think they need to revert this and make this accuracy change only apply to the scope rifle upgrade. Because this is not like the, day one where they could shoot the Shrek and uh, their AOE would nuke a squad. <laughs> And they were accurate. I, I mean, low bar, Aries. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the the Jaeger like spam is still totally viable, and and you'll it see with, with the increased accuracy, units get knocked out on retreat, and the Jaegers are so good at range. Uh, like if you are if you come across a Jaeger squad and they are in cover and you're approaching, just just retreat. I don't care if you have Rangers, like just get out of there because they're gonna burn you down faster than you're ready for. Um, and the I have a general issue with like these generalist units, like the the foot guards. At least the with the foot guards, their small arms are short range. But like the Jaegers getting like ranged rifles plus a Shrek. Uh, yeah, they can do good at any range, really. Yeah. yeah. So the, one of my least favorite units in the game, unfortunately. But that's just me. You know. I love them. I know. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> uh, coastals. Fire aim time significant reduction. Weapon cooldown, significant reduction. Weapon accuracy increase. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of coastals this patch. Probably. Yeah. They're uh, they're really good, and they just got better. Uh, and there weren't any nerfs to their like free reinforcements or anything like that. So, um, they made small change to the bunker pop cap later. But yeah, expect to see coastals. And and honestly, I don't know the counter because uh, they they do a decent job countering everything the allies throw at them. I think in team games, the answer is just fight somewhere else for a minute. Yeah. Uh, Panzer Grenz. So the short range accuracy stays the same, uh, but long range accuracy, basically a 25% increase. Um, and they said their goal is to make it so you, you're not using it like an SMG unit. I think this is just a pretty significant buff to the P Grenz. So Go for what it. I would have liked to seen, mm -hmm. um, since that was their goal, is decrease their short range accuracy just a bit you know yeah. say to 0 0.68 or something like that nothing yeah. major yeah uh, but to really influence that because they want them to be that mid-range unit which they're not because they get punked by rifles at mid-range um with their new vet ability though they seem to do decently fine but if they want to take that approach i would have liked them to decrease that short range just just a bit um because they can be in a very impressive unit at really any range yeah yeah and with their their high starting health my biggest issue with the pigrens was always like they could run over open ground not drop a model and then they close with you and it's over right because stg's yeah. high rate of fire so high hopefully damage. with the ttk that changes a bit but yeah um yeah we'll see no more sprint ability for them though instead they get the automatic fire which basically increased burst length um but it reduces their speed and, and gets rid of sprint entirely i like this i think there are other units with the sprint um so the sprint just encourages you to use them like assault grenadiers, and I think this encourages you to fight from cover a little bit more. So at least it makes sense yeah. thematically. Falsham pioneers, you know what they didn't need was higher damage output. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. They were fine the way they were. Uh, yeah, Be beware Falsham pioneers. They're going to nuke your guys at range. It's what, that 0.663 accuracy at long range. That's disgusting. Um, yeah, that's a big buff. Uh, Ket and Crod. So when you use the recon scan, it can't camouflage. I really like this. I like this too. Because they were so hard to kill at range. Mm -hmm. uh, vet requirements go up as well. Um, also makes sense. So now one mine doesn't get you straight to vet three. Um, I think it's a good change. Yeah, Ket's super useful. Uh, you know, highly recommend you build regardless. Um, pack 40 AT gun when camouflage is on. Uh, if oh, I like this. This is just quality of life. If the unit's detected, it 
the penalties associated with the camouflage no longer apply. So that's, that's cool. I'm sp split on this. I do love it. I do. <laughs> uh, but you know, coming from a higher skill level playing field than me, uh, in a competitive <laughs> standpoint. Well, you know, just yeah, most yeah, yeah. of the community. Most of the community is gonna love this, and and I think it's a great change overall. But I do think it's you know, if you're not microing and you're not on top of your game and you get your AT guns caught in the way of the infantry and stuff like mm -hmm. that, um, you're not getting punished for it like you used to. Like, you really had to micro to get out of there to be on top of it, and now it's just, I can hit reverse and it'll go. Yeah. So, you know, catch-22, um, but I do think it's a better change overall. Yeah, you know, that, that makes sense, and I can see a scenario where, like, a good player uses a flare to reveal an AT gun, and then the AT gun basically suffers no penalty for being re revealed. And and exactly. so yeah, so you you know it's there, but the counterplay doesn't really apply. Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, two two one MG damage increase from three to three point six. This just makes it more viable against infantry. Um, we've seen the the value of the two two one. I like it. Uh, Brum bear new ability shatter will generates an R around the Brum bear that debuffs nearby infantry once and then retriggers every ten seconds for thirty seconds. Reduces affected infantry speed by 50% and the weapons cooldown and reload speeds by 20%. Effects do not stack, last for 10 seconds. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't think the Brumbear needed this. I, I don't either. I think its vetability was rather useless, but uh, I don't think it needed this. <laughs> well, try, don't try to sticky the Brumbear because they're going to slow down <laughs> and then get annihilated. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, use the AT guns that it'll just bounce. So Brumbear is still super powerful. Imagine three of them just rolling into your, your infantry stack and you just get shredded because you can't do anything. I don't, can't I don't even fight other infantry. I don't need to imagine. <laughs> I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Um. <laughs> uh, so it's such a weird change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 20 mil flak emplacement, lowering the cost in population. Uh, so armor increased, health increased, pop cost redu uh, reduced, range reduced. Um, I'm just not a big fan of emplacements. I see what they're doing. I think it's a good change. It's it's not really a unit that's used, so like I like it. You're still not really gonna see it a bunch. Yeah, I I mean I like the range reduction. I'll, I'll give it that. <laughs> uh designate defensive line muni cost from 70 to 50. I, this makes sense to me. DDL hasn't been as valuable since they removed yeah. the auto heal, auto repair ability. Uh AT and command bunkers now cost pop. Two each. Good. Now, here's the thing. All bunkers need to cost population. I, uh, I agree with that. But this is a, this is a good step. Specifically these ones, though. Yeah, it, this is a good step in the right direction. Um, yeah, because when you're already getting the manpower for free with using the coastals, like, yeah, I don't know. It, anyway, maybe I'm just revealing myself as a noob that I struggle against coastals but um this is a good start luftwaffe relay point it replaces the luftwaffe combat group so that was the wearable call-in with the jaegers riding on it correct yes uh you got one wearable one jaeger squad i think this is pretty cool um i know wormock already had an ability where you could put a little stash on points and kind of reinforce it from that mm -hmm. um but i think it's going to allow from for some pretty exciting gameplay uh Luftwaffe was slowly becoming more like the deck doctrine that can just disappear all the time, but mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> yeah, so I like this. I think if you pair this with the uh, the resource cache, uh, like Retreat Point, and you're using primarily Falchion Pioneers and Falchion Jaegers, right, it gives you a forward retreat and gives you that uh, reinforcement. So, um, yeah, kind of cool. Allows for some more, like, Luftwaffe-specific play, which I like. Yeah. Uh, LG-40, AT gun, camo, no longer requires VET-1. Now it gets high explosive rounds, so it can do some damage to infantry. Um, I think it's gimmicky, but cool. Yeah. Okay. Y you know, like, we'll we'll see. I don't think it's going to become overpowering, but it'll give it a little bit of extra utility, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Brits. Royal Engineer Squad. Uh, health increased... Accuracy increased, especially at short range. Um, I actually going to rip. Well, so that's the thing. So that's what I thought, and then I played against them. They do still drop models quickly, uh, 
And so what you need to do, like if you're using the sappers, use smoke, use sight blockers, close the distance. Yeah, they'll do a ton of damage. But if you get caught, like you can't do what you used to do where they would just kind of you run just at you. Up. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're they'll be down to two models before you blink. Uh That's and then good. suddenly yeah. So originally I saw this and I was legitimately scared. Uh now but I think it's reasonable. We'll see. Well, I'm sure someone will school me real quick, but initial impression was uh feels balanced. Good. Infantry section. Rifle damage increase, Webley damage increase. Uh significant accuracy increase range um and then scoped rifles get even more accuracy maintains increased accuracy against units and cover and weapon penetration that currently exists and then the bren increased to 100 munitions i i think we're going to see more infantry sections probably uh the aussies looking at that though scares me a bit i, I was already scared of them <laughs> and so, this is a little much. I think this on the change to the infantry sections makes the Aussies less viable. Because the infantry sections have so much utility. And if you look at the, the accuracy kind of spread, they are now more accurate at long range than they were pre-patch at short range. And they get That's true. A significant damage increase. If you look at the Aussie, their mid-range is good, but their long range drops to half of what the infantry sections have. Um yeah. And then, yeah, plus the Bren, plus the snares, uh, I and the, the rifle grenade. The thing yeah. with the Aussies, though, is you didn't really need that <clears throat> long-range accuracy because you just had a one-click vet ability. So, mm, like, if you had yeah. four Aussies together, you had the potential to wipe a four-man squad in one go. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think, you know, we'll see some interesting tactics. I think, though, that this... We're about to see much more Brit infantry than we have in the past. Um, Probably. Yeah, they're they're pretty hardy. They do more damage. If you keep your Brits in cover, they're gonna just smoke people. Uh, Aussies, yeah, remains to be seen. That short range accuracy is is pretty high, um, and then the vet ability, like you said, is nasty. So, uh, Vickers HMG team. Um, so focus gunnery changed to a toggle ability that increases range and vision, but decreases the weapon arc and removes area suppression. It seems like kind of a niche ability. I don't know what you think. It, yeah, um, I'm in favor of their old vet ability, honestly. I don't even know what that was. Inside. Basically the same thing, but you had suppression. Yeah, Lowered suppression, but you had suppression. Well, isn't that like the Vicar's biggest weakness is the lack of suppression, right? Because if it kills units too fast, then they don't get suppressed, and then they just kind of run at yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, two pounder veterancy requirements. It doesn't even say if it's an increase or a decrease. I have no idea what that means. Sorry, everyone. We'll just let it be there. <laughs> Six pounder, uh, 17 pounder, three inch mortar team have the ability to entrench the weapon. Um, so it sets up, remains stationary, uh, takes five seconds. It takes 25% less damage and fires 15% faster. It cannot move or reface while it's active, except for mortars, which can rotate. This is going to make the three inch mortar teams really. Uh, really pretty effective. Um, as well as the seventeen pounders. Yeah, I well, mean, even considering the six pounder can get can do it too. Yeah, I, I think the big difference is the AT guns can't rotate, whereas the mortar can. Um, yeah. But interesting. Yeah, I I don't hate this. Uh, I, you know, it's a little. It's still not an emplacement, so I'm okay with that. Um, but a little bit of resilience against uh, artillery makes sense. Uh, they, I wonder. Go ahead. Will this affect the seventeen pounder emplacement, the anti tank gun emplacement? I don't. I don't think so. It already had like an entrenchment ability. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, the anti air truck, uh, combat role too similar to the Humber, and lots more downsides. So, munitions cost of the the Polson is increased. Um. But when the unit's stationary, similar to the Zook squad, range increases to 50. The range bonus remains even if the vehicle rotates or pivots. But if it moves, it removes the range bonus. The, the base range is half that now. So 25. Uh, area of effect damage increased. Additional 5 damage against vehicles. So it, it basically... And you can use a handbrake to lock it in place. So essentially... It sounds like the Polson is now designed to essentially be like a mobile Bofors, which I guess yeah, is literally um, what it is, right? 
the range is pretty crazy when it sets up. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I was hoping it would have uh, increased anti-air utility. Because the only time I built this recently is when I needed an anti-air unit, and it was like shockingly yeah, ineffective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fragmentation rounds increase the area effect radius by three. Increase damage to units and cover. Replace the pressing fire. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense to me. So maybe we'll see some more Polstons. Um, yeah. Crusader 2. Uh, is it being ad adjusted to be a fast firing tank that excels at taking out lighter vehicles or flanking heavier targets? So significant decrease in reload speed. Um, model damage limit decreased from 3 to 2. Area of effect near damage reduced from 1 to 0.75. So this is a little bit it's going to be a little bit less effective against infantry squads, but more effective at chasing wounded vehicles. I think that's good. Yes. I, I think it's a really good change for it. Yeah, and, and you see with the, the Crusader 3, the 6-pounder conversion, um, they reduce the cost. Okay, I feel like everybody just upgraded to the 6-pounder anyway. But the, And the yeah. reload speed increase, area, but the area effect reduced, model damage limit. Um, yeah, I, I like this because I feel like the Crusader is very spammable. Um, well, no, the reload speed decreased. I'm sorry, that's what six I... 6-pounder. That's what I... Yeah, the reload speed decreased, so it'll fire faster. Yeah. But I think it goes hand-in-hand hand to what they want it to do. Mm -hmm. um, especially considering you already have the Matilda and the Grant, which just eat infantry for breakfast and any sort of team weapon in front of them. So we don't necessarily need three of those, so I think it's a good change. Yeah. And it, look, the, the AoE damage range is significantly reduced. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that. Model damage limit. So that... I... I It'll make it do exactly what they say it is. It either gets up close on vehicles, right, to use the limited penetration to hit side and rear armor, chases chases wounded vehicles. It's not helpless against infantry, but it's not going to run them over, run them over. Uh, Churchill increased frontal armor and lower maximum reload time. I think it made sense. There was no need to to get Churchill's out with the Matilda the way it was. I agree, especially you combine it with Grant. It just it didn't need help. Yeah. Uh, Beaufort's emplacement, armor increase, so similar to the 20 mil flak, uh, slight reduction in cost, increased penetration, that basically doubled penetration and pop cost reduction. Um, so, still susceptible to artillery, but better at dealing with light vehicles, um, and it'll take less damage from infantry. I, again, I'm not a huge fan of the emplacements, but this makes sense and is in line with the, the 20 mil mm -hmm. flak. Artillery tripwire flares. Um, okay. Can be planted in any location following traditional mine placement. Detonates like regular mines. They haven't even walked over. Flare and artillery effect remains the same. I didn't okay. see too many of these. Um, I, I, but I don't know. This is the Aussie thing, correct? I believe so, yeah. Um, you just get one freak artillery shell that shoots at you when you walk over it. So I think... It'll be a interesting change. I think it, overall a cool change too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, I'd like to see it be like reasonably useful. Right. Uh, artillery saturation now increases the shell kind of off map artillery's uh, artillery abilities by two for perimeter airburst air barrage. Um. Okay. This was. I think this is uh, up against the heavy mortar in the Indian artillery battle group. So like so you have to choose one or the other. So I think this makes artillery saturation a little bit more likely uh to be chosen if you you don't need the 120. I think it'll get changed overall. Yeah. Uh the five five and a half inch artillery emplacement, uh the angle scatter we already talked about. Shell count during standard barrages increased from four to seven. Barrage recharge time increased from forty five to sixty. Um so they're trying to give it a niche over other howitzers. Uh, with only four shells, it wasn't doing a ton of damage. I think this makes sense. Like, if you're going to bombard something, I'd rather have an extended barrage uh, to make sure that if, if they don't move, they actually take some damage. Yeah. Uh, but they have so many other artillery abilities to include the bishop that I never really saw this. We're but, of their army. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, designate targets. 
Um, so this is the alternative to recon artillery. So it, they basically reduce immunity cost, increase the aura, and reduce the received accuracy debuff, uh, reduce from 40% to 20%. Um, okay, so they basically cut the debuff in half, but increase the range and reduce the cost. Um, I'm not super familiar with this one. I don't know if you've, you've used this one in the past. Um, not really. Okay. No. Uh, we'll just ask, we'll just ask, ask Garrett, because he plays lots of Brits. Yeah. <laughs> Incendiary carpet bombing muni increased to 180. This makes sense. I think, like, you see this ability really early. Um, and so, 30 munitions, probably not going to totally change it, but over time, it'll keep it from being spammed. Uh, naval, yeah, naval bombardment, muni cost goes up, command point requirement goes up. I I I like it because it keeps it from coming out too early. Like it's a, a very powerful ability as well. Yeah, it's a flak thirty six deletion tool. Oh yeah. Uh, fix the issue. Oh, rip will the noobs. Uh, fix the issue where the British twenty five pounder artillery from the headquarters could get destroyed. So if you guys didn't see the video, uh. An allied player could take an engineer, satchel charge or demo charge, the Brit player's 25 pound artillery, and then the dingo artillery call in, rather than being from the base artillery, would come from an off map and it would land faster with much less scatter. Hmm. Uh, so that has now been fixed because you can't destroy the artillery in the HQ. I did not know that. Oh, I tried not to proliferate that one, it just seemed broken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Onto DAC, Panzer Pioneer accuracy increase. Um, it just brings them in line uh, with the other early game infantry units. Uh, Persilieri uh, accuracy increase. They actually have really good long range accuracy. I'm, yeah, they got a lot of love. I'm I'm happy with that. I like I like Bursas. Yeah, I, so I think the the Bursa strategy is going to hold up uh, even better. Uh, Panzer Grenadier accuracy buff across the board. It, they feel pretty good. You can see their mid-range accuracy is very close to their short-range accuracy. Pgrens in green cover uh, will do a lot of work at everything out to the longest ranges. So uh, I think they feel pretty good right now. Uh, Panzer Jaeger squad uh, remove the MG34. Um, I get it. I, I think it's a good change. Yeah. I, I liked it because if it was late game and I had munitions floating and you give it to the Pieger so they don't just get run over by infantry. Yeah, there's that. Um, their, their issue now is they're a four man squad. Uh, and so they're going to get just like the Zook squad with the increased uh, DPS of all the other infantry, they are going to get burned down pretty quick. Um, so you, I, I think the best way to play them right now is with the half track call in. Keep them in the half track. Because uh, then they don't take damage from small arms fire rather than the half track. Yeah. Assault grins. Huge change here. So the health reverted to 110 per model. So again, they are have 30 more health than the breakthrough grenadiers with the MP40 upgrade. Um, smoke now requires veteran C1. Their tactical assault veteran ability has been removed. Their new ability is that when they disembark vehicles that are in combat, they gain a 40% speed bonus and their grenade recharge immediately resets. So they're, they're designed to be used with vehicles and they're going to sprint right at you, which they need to close the distance, but they have a lot more health. These guys are going to go back, go back to being terminators at close range. Uh, yeah, I don't like this change overall. Um, the health thing is, fine but as someone who loves assault guns i'm personally pissed that i lost the uh, uber op that one ability <laughs> um, <laughs> that kind of you know tied in tandem with hey they get more powerful the closer you get and then you activated that and then they really shredded stuff mm -hmm. and i feel like this new ability that they have is gonna fall off mid-game because you're not really running around with 250s and whatnot for them to get out so once those die which they do die yeah you're not really gonna see it so it'll just be like an early game kind of cheese and an annoyance yeah or when you get a p3 out later you get them on the p3 for like three and a half seconds and then have them get off um yeah i i don't like that the smoke is now 
locked behind that one. Uh, I I like when people play with smoke, and I think one of the biggest counters, we'll talk about it later, to the TTK, TTK increase is the use of smoke to close the distance. So anything that discourages the like use of smoke abilities, I, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, crowd shoots in team. Rear armor increased uh, from one and a half to three. Turn plan allows faster, tighter turns. Can no longer reverse. Um, I am. It's going to take me a minute to get used to this. I I can <laughs> tell you that much. Uh, but it should be faster. So, yeah, I don't know. No, no reverse is going to be weird. I I guarantee you, at some point, I'm going to be playing this hitting the R key and being like, why isn't yeah. it moving? <laughs> and then it's going to die and I'm going to throw my headset across the room and yeah. Um, yeah, what do you, you got anything for that? Uh, no. I, I think it's more realistic. A bike should not be able to reverse at full speed. So, it'd, you know. It'd be hilarious if they had it back up at like literally back pedal speed where the guy's pushing with his feet. See, now that I would like. <laughs> Uh, 250 light carrier, uh, MG accuracy increased, moving accuracy is reduced, uh, veterancy requirements reduced. Um, yeah, the, the MG on the 250 does some damage to units out of cover. Uh, it feels good. That's good. The 259, um, before it was just a lighter eight rod, it is now a slower but more durable troop transport that gains increased firepower when garrison. So, it sounds like it can be garrisoned with it can be garrisoned with a squad when garrison its rate of fire is sped up by 0.8 seconds it gets slower acceleration deceleration lower overall speed um increased health it says 240 to 280 320 with combat half tracks upgrade but as far as like you have to have the combat half tracks upgrade to upgrade it i thought you do um unless they changed that Machine gun accuracy increased. Auto cannon stats adjusted to that of the eight rod, except the damage uh, is reduced, um, but the area radius is higher. Um, so, and the moving accuracy is reduced. So it won't be it won't be as effective like running stuff down, um, but can also distribute medical supplies. I think it's going to be a no brainer if you have half tracks on the field. Uh, and you've got a little bit of spare manpower, this upgrade will actually help quite a bit because you can still like throw assault grens in it. It'll be a little tankier. It'll do significantly increased damage to infantry. I wish I had seen this before I played DAC today because I would have used it. I think it's a pretty cool change. Um, and the new ability, Hit and Run, when the half track is damaged and reaches 75 health or below, the unit gains plus 30% speed and plus 30% acceleration for 20 seconds. Um, on this is basically a cheese card. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not not crazy about this. It, it'll be fun. When it'll help helps you get your half track away, but um, man, that's not cool. Like if this is gonna be harder to kill. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. And then the the field howitzer for the Guastatory commander. Um. So now it can auto fire. Wow. Yeah. I know that's uh. Yeah. Cool. So so they basically want you to tow it closer to the front line, but it'll give you auto fire. You know what? That's kind of cool. Rangers that, two point That that makes it different, right? It gives it kind of its own spot. And I, all right, I like that. I might actually use this thing now. Before it was just kind I of a meme. Cool. Yeah. Um, there are bug fixes. There are a lot of bug fixes. Uh, my the only thing I'm going to highlight here, the SSF commandos have learned from the Australian Light Infantry the secret art of targeting soldiers hiding in buildings and can now use their knife throw ability against them. It's a funny <laughs> line. Please fix the knife throw, though, so it's not affected by cover, because right now the damage gets knocked down, knocked down to 50 if it crosses cover, which doesn't make any sense. The knife still nope. hurts just as much. Uh, and then I would really love to see the knife do like 200 damage. To make sure it just knocks out one model whenever you throw it. Otherwise, it's Call pointless. Knife. What's, yeah. Because, like, yeah. right now, a Panzer Grenadier, uh, or especially a Stoss Troopin, they're just running just up. It. They take a knife to the neck, and they're like, I'm cool. I'm still going to shoot at you. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Um, you know, tightrope covered the knife throw a little bit in his last uh, micro tips and tricks video. I had a bunch of knife stuff. I did a bunch of knife throw testing and I had it all saved. He, he covered it all. Um, you know, minus the, the cover thing. So uh, if you have questions about the SSF knife throw, go watch tightrope's latest uh, video. Um, Aries. All right. So we've, we've rolled through the patch notes. What do you think this is going to do to gameplay in the meta? Um, I, I think it's going to incentivize more tactical gameplay. I don't think we're going to really see a meta shift. I think it's just, you know, it's compounding the existing meta. Take mm -hmm. Wormach. My biggest gripe that I didn't see that I was really hoping for was a change, not to the DAC 8 rads, but to the Wormach 8 rads, because they are so oppressive right now, especially in 1v1s. Mm -hmm. And then it trickles over into 2v2s, say, on, especially on a map like Day 101. Um, it is super common to encounter three to five eight rads with three packs sitting behind them and one to two B grins. Mm -hmm. And it can't be stopped because, you know, your answer to fight the eight rad is going to be AT guns or vehicles, right? Yeah. Um, if you have your AT guns, they are just going to get ran up on by the P grins, which mm -hmm. are super tanky infantry. Uh, to counter the infantry, you would put your infantry towards that, but the eight rads counter your infantry. And so your last option left would be to throw your vehicles at their eight rads to push them off, which they just get one tapped <laughs> by the triple AT gun sitting behind them. Yeah. Um, so the, especially combined with mech assault and then they just get the auto health. Like I played a game last night and the only way I won is I out spammed the eight rads by spamming greyhounds and chaffees. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I just said, screw it. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, you have two AT guns, you're getting ran over. If you have infantry, you're getting wiped on, especially with that many. It's just, they delete. Mm -hmm. So my biggest issue is not seeing a nerf there, um, either to the general unit or say, you know, we're going to increase the manpower cost, the fuel cost, lock it behind an extra CP, something. And just like you pointed out earlier, you don't really see that from DAC because you're, if you go eight reds, you're really going to get martyrs unless you back tech for AT guns specifically. Um, so it's not really a problem with DAC because it can still be countered. Mm -hmm. Wormock, you're just hitting the stalemate, and then the next thing that comes out after the eight rads is the brumbars. And now that they buff the brumbars, <laughs> it's just going to emphasize that tactic even more. Yeah. So, as far as the meta there, I don't really think we're going to see a lot of change. Uh, most of the stuff was just tweaks, it really focused around the TTK and not overall unit adjustments. Artillery is going to become more prevalent, obviously, but um. I think the game's in a good state right now. It just needs, in my opinion, economic touches. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't really see that. One of the biggest nerfs I would have liked to have seen was USF lose their discount for the manpower. And I think it should just be removed off the board. People have been saying that since the game came out because it just creates an unfair playing field if you don't match tech for tech doing that. Yeah, I feel like but, you, you need it even more now because you're going to be, your infantry are going to be dropping models faster. Um, yeah, and so that advanced logistics, like they thought they nerfed the ISC by getting rid of the captain's forward retreat, but the ISC is still the best support center in the game. Oh, absolutely, um, and I think it'll continue to be so up until we see the manpower reduction go away or mm -hmm. severely get nerfed. Yeah. So, uh, so like I said, and we're already at an hour for this, so I, I won't belabor the point here. The infantry engagements right now, I think they feel better. Right, they reward you for using cover. They reward you for using smoke to get to the right distance. Um, they feel a little bit crisper. You're gonna be shocked at how quickly your units not just drop models, but also like die on retreat. Um, so squad wipes are gonna be more common. Uh, vehicle play is still really viable. I think you know the last patch we saw, uh, kind of a focus, a shift back towards infantry heavy play with some of the buffs uh, to snares especially. Now you're gonna see it uh, flip back the other direction. Um, I'd say remember that this is essentially like a really complicated version of like rock, paper, scissors, li lizard, Spock. So, uh, <laughs> you know, like if you're, if you see infantry and your idea is I'm going to counter those infantry with other infantry, you're going to bleed a lot of manpower. Um, so r think really hard as you're playing about like what the, what the hard counters are. And then you really just need to know like the range of your engagements that your units want to be in. Um, and just use cover, use cover as much as possible. Um, uh, it's going to reward flanks. If you flank a machine gun now, machine gun's done. Same thing with a mortar. If the mortar's unprotected, you run up on it, you grab it. It's super fast. Um, my only real complaint so far, uh, 
I would have loved to see, and, and we can skill planes, I didn't expect them to do anything with that. Um, but the way they did this was they basically increased the accuracy across the board. <clears throat> what I would have liked if they had implemented um, for all infantry units, but I think for all units that use like bolt action or semi-auto rifles and not SMGs, I would have liked to see an accuracy bonus and a rate of fire bonus applied when they're stationary and in cover. Because I think what you really wanted to fix was the problem of, hey, I've got this squad behind green cover and this other squad just runs across the open at them, doesn't like takes a little bit of damage, doesn't drop a model and then they win because they've got SMGs. The problem it's fixed a little bit now, but the way they did it doesn't totally fix that mechanic. So, um, yeah, uh, as my my lovely dog chimes in her thoughts, uh, Aries, do you have anything else? Uh, that you want to throw no. in there? I, I think uh, overall the, the game's in a good state. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, I'm sure there'll be hot fixes coming out as they identify things, but um, Aries, hey, thanks for sitting down. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. Cool. Alright, that's all for us, guys, and uh, I'll catch y'all in the next one.